And welcome back for part two. Uh, with the gun and the paint both warmed up, I threw a piece of cardboard down, took them to my basement, and started hitting the base gun with the base coat. So I used the Illumahide, and I was doing uh, like some thinner coats with a couple uh, back and forths. So I didn't want to just lay it on real thick, but I only did one actual base coat. I didn't go back and do uh, a couple of coats. I just, uh, this back and forth light coats for one actual base coat. I tried to hit it from a couple different angles so that it hit the recesses, but if I missed any of them, I wasn't too worried about it. Uh, the Krylon may cover any black that I missed, and the black's eventually going to show through anyhow, so I wasn't too concerned. I just painted the right side, the left side, the top and the bottom. Those I had to hold on to the gun, so I couldn't get much footage because I needed both of my hands. And then I uh, let it sit for a couple days and moved on to some other stuff. All right, the Illumahide has cured for like three days now. Um, the can actually says full cure is like 10 to 14 days, but I can now paint over it. So that's what we're going to go do. What happens, uh, what I've had happen before, if the Illumahide isn't cured and you paint over it, depending what paint you paint over it, especially more Illumahide, uh, it sh like has some shrinkage when it dries. And if the Illumahide underneath hasn't cured, it'll wrinkle it, which I don't really care about because... Like, who cares? But uh, if it does matter to you, uh, the, uh, curing the Lumahide matters. So, but while we're waiting, we got these paper plates, we got this pencil. Uh, this is how I've always made stencils. I've taken a plate, I have decided to draw on it. So I would just do like a shape. Oh, that kind of looks like a penis. But, uh, well, anyway, that shape, or so I try to do a couple different types of shapes, so some long ones, like so, and I did that first kind of dick-shaped one, and then maybe something more splatty shaped, whatever, it doesn't matter, just some random shapes. And then you're going to cut them out with your... Your razor blade. Uh, when you cut them out, they don't have to be perfectly sharp edges. So like as you're uh, cutting into it, if it doesn't cut all the way through and then you rip it and it gives it a little fuzzy edge, it doesn't matter. It might actually help. I don't know. When you're done, you have something looks like this. This one's obviously been used before. So uh, I'm going to make a bunch more of those. I don't know how many of them I'm going to use on this particular project. I usually do three or four shapes. I tend to also, uh, on one of them, do like an extra little kidney bean shape or a little circle so that I add a couple small parts if I want. But I plan on using some of these other stencils. Uh, I mean, if you have like the cheaper plastic stencils that uh, from Amazon or some of the nicer stencils from Primary Arms, what one's this? Flectarn shapes, because like I'll hold it over the black here. That's got a bunch of the little kidney bean shapes. And this has got the tiger stripe shapes. And I think this is their multi-terrain. So some of the random shapes that you see in multi-cam. They have a fourth one. I don't remember what it is. Maybe it's digital. I don't know. Uh, don't remember. But uh, the nice thing about these is if you want a nice hard edge when you have your gun and you lay it over it, it will lay flat because it's soft. The downside is if you only want one of those shapes, you're going to have to find something to cover the other shapes with while you're spraying it. So it'd be a, a two-handed job. Uh, it would be nice. I think I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, if they sold these as sheets that didn't have any cutouts so that I could lay them over it so I just get the one cutout that I want. But they don't, so I'm gonna try to see what I come up with. Uh, but we are gonna make some stencils while the rest of that's curing and then we'll get into the painty part. Which brings us to the painting part. And here I just grabbed the different shaped plates that I had and I started with the brown. Uh, usually I do brown first, no matter what the, the background color is. And uh, whether it be the OD here, I think there's an MCT magazine in here as well that you'll see. And I just started randomly laying them on there. Here I tried the uh, primary arm stencils. I had to do a little masking on them, but uh, it worked fine. And 
gave some some different shapes. I, I did like the those stencils a, a bit. Uh, some of the paper plate stencils I would lift up off of the magazine somewhat in order to get a fuzzier edge, but uh, most of them I just left lay flat. I went and did all the magazines with the brown and on the different stencils and whatnot, and uh, got a random collection of shapes and whatnot. I kind of paint it like the tape isn't there so that when we go take the tape off, it'll cut out well. Um, I used the fields of small ones on the back spine and front spines of the magazines, and it worked out pretty well. The uh, tiger stripe pattern from uh, Primary Arms was more of a uh, Atax X pattern than tiger stripe but it turned out fine and i used that on a bunch of the 308 magazines and uh, after i did the dark brown then i grabbed the flat dark earthish color from krylon and did the same thing and uh random shapes and patterns and stencils and you can see that when i got a little little more flat dark earth on it than i wanted but i can go back and touch that up later and uh so these are the three base colors that i use on most all of my camo patterns and it's just a bunch of olive drab, dark brown, flat dark earth. And then I use the other colors kind of as, a, as some accent colors. Uh, continued on with the, the tiger stripe ones and the, the paper plates. Like all the stencils worked fine. I did not use any of the Amazon ones because, well, they're, they're not that easy to work with because uh, you have to mask off so much. There's more negative space than there is actual template. Uh here you can see I grabbed the olive drab to use on the MCT magazine, and I dug that one out that had a little too much flat dark earth and touched it up as well. Otherwise, the flat uh, the Krylon OD I didn't use a lot. Now I use this lighter green from Krylon, and I really like this green. This is where Krylon blows the doors off of Rust-Oleum. Rust-Oleum's light green is really, really light, and it's, it doesn't have this cool olivey color. Uh, I'm a big fan of this. Uh, I don't even know what colors they call their their paints, but the, the lighter of the two greens in Krylon, I'm probably going to do a, a rifle with this as the base coat. I just don't know what rifle. Maybe the 74 project that I'm working on right now, I'll use that as the base color uh, instead of uh, olive drab or flat dark earth. Oh, my phone's ringing. I did use the uh, the can, the cap to the can to hold some magazines up to get the back. And then last, I grabbed the lighter color, which is kind of like a khaki. It doesn't look a lot different on the video, but in person, you can see that it's definitely a lighter shade of tan than the flat dark earth is. And I used it almost exclusively with small patterns. I didn't use big, large blobs of that color. And uh, now we're moving on to the gun, I guess. Now there's not really a whole lot left to talk about. Uh, I did find a better position to use the camera. But you can see, I kind of kept the same premise. Uh, I did the browns first, and uh, the paint dries quick enough, and I didn't really care if it got like scratched up or whatever. So I just kept flipping it around and adding the colors, top, bottom, whatever I wanted, uh, shape-wise. And like I put the stock back on, I untaped the grip. At this point, I was trying to make sure everything had a good coverage of pattern. I did keep the stock all the way to the back, so no matter where it's running on the buffer tube, there'll still be some pattern showing. Uh, I added some to the bipod as well. Uh, it has a flat dark earth base, so the colors I used on it were a little different. As you can see, I used that other green, which doesn't stand out a lot, but it does give some character uh, on top of the olive drab, and I really like that color. Uh, the more I look at it here on the video too, I, the more I like it. So uh, some greens, some browns, I uh, flipped to some flat dark earth. And uh, my memory card filled up before I finished, but I thought I had enough footage, so I didn't bother uh, putting a, changing out the memory card to do the light khaki. I just went ahead and kept on painting and grabbing different patterns and different templates whatnot and started working on the rifle. Uh, as you can see, I tried to get a nice mix match of all the different colors, and if I had too much of any one color, I could always grab the olive drab Krylon and touch up in case I got too big of like a big blob of khaki or something. I just hit it with some uh, OD and carry on.